country of Germany. Ooh. So here is my Germany top. Today, this is one of the most scenic places in all of Germany. Like, I hear not seeing the weather, guys. Like, the weather is so good. Like, there's no much sun, there's no much snow. It's just like, it's just neutral, guys. And there's a lot of green grass. Like, what more can you want in a peaceful place? Like, ah. Oh. I need to go to Germany, guys. That's how that's how I can see right now because what I'm seeing is too it's too enticing. Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today's video, we're gonna be checking out top 25 places to visit in Germany. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Without further ado, let's get right into this video today, guys. I want to show you some of my favorite places in the magical country of Germany. Ooh. So here is my Germany top 25. Bro! That may hand down right there is like so beautiful. I like the way the yacht was that a yacht. I like the way those like speed off going around of it. Like it was all, that's so alone. It's like that's so beautiful, guys. Germany is one of the most beautiful and historical countries in the world. No, it's a land guys. full of fairy tale towns, what? endless castles, and enchanting sceneries. Germany has so much waiting to be explored. Ooh. Let's start this video off at Germany's highest mountain, the Zugspitze. Now with a height of 2,962 meters, it's easily one of the most impressive mountains in the country. Zugspitze is located in southern Germany and the easiest way to get to the top of the mountain is by a cable car. It costs around 60 mm. euros and it's one of the biggest gondolas I've ever been in. Honestly, an engineering phenomenon and a little scary going up. And once you reach the top, you can explore the mountain station I mean, it really blew me away up there. It totally reminded me wow. of an evil villain's lair. One thing that I thought was interesting is you can walk through this tunnel and it'll take you to the Austrian side of Zugspitze. Now, from the platform on the German side, you can see the summit cross. Me and my brother decided we wanted to climb to the top. The snow made it a little sketchy, but we held on tight to the iron wire and climbed a ladder and made it to the cross. I mean, the views were <laughs> unreal up there. <laughs> I mean, if you go in the summertime, I'm sure it's not as nice sketchy to summit this. Now, it. after Zugspitze, Pizza, you can take the cable car down to visit the Lake Ibsi. Now it's known as wow. the Maldives of the Alps with its clear water and trees. Like bro, this is the, the color, the color is like blue and green, like what? So please, after this video, I'm, go I'm going to be checking German food so because I would like to visit German someday because if the food is not really nice, you, just, you can't really survive there. So I will check in our German food. Because I really love what I'm seeing already. This is like how many seconds into the clip, but I really love what I'm seeing already. So, yeah, tell me how I got Jamal for that test down in the comments section down below, guys. Dotted islands. I mean, the color of the water there is astounding. Now, if you have time, I definitely recommend walking along the lake. It's full of beautiful groves of trees and a perfect place to relax on the shoreline and enjoy some Bavarian nature. After, we're going to head over to Wagen Bruschi. Now I have to say this is one of the most scenic places in all of Germany. I mean I was just baffled by this place. It's this beautiful little lake nestled in the mountains and it's full of farm sheds that dot the hillside. Now the lake is overlooked by the perfectly placed Carvendel Alps. I mean it reminded me a lot of Alp de Soucy Ooh. in the Dolomites. I had such a fun time exploring here. I just walked down a little dirt road to get there and it was a spectacular place to enjoy the Bavarian sunset. While we're still in Bavaria, we're gonna head over to Birch Tesgaden. Now I have to say this is one of the most beautiful towns in all of Germany. It's just a two hour drive from Munich and it's nestled in the Bavarian Alps. One of my that favorite features of Birch Tesgaden is the Watzmann Mountain. It's a uniquely shaped peak that towers over the town. It almost looks like someone took a bite out of it. One thing I love about- Like, I hear not seeing the weather guys. Like the weather is so good, like there's no much sun, there's no much snow. It's just like it's just neutral guys. And there's a lot of green grass. Like what more can you want in a peaceful place like? Ah I need to go to Germany guys. That's how that's how I can see right now because what I'm seeing is too it's too enticing. Like I just want to vanish myself into this video. Like I need to be in this place guys. About Birch Scotten is there's so many beautiful churches to explore. One of my favorites is the church in Ramsau. It's right next to this beautiful stream and there's this picture perfect ridge to observe the church from. Another one of my favorites is the Maria Jern Church which offers a perfect view of the Watzmann Mountain. One of the main reasons I wanted to go to Berchtesgaden was to visit Hitler's Eagle's Nest. 
Now I'm really fascinated with it's World not. War II history and I had to see this place for myself. Now the Eagle's Nest was built in 1939 and was given to Hitler for his 50th birthday. Now to get to the Eagle's Nest, you can take a bus up. When you get to the top, you'll walk through a deep tunnel into the mountain. When I was in there, it was just crazy to think that Hitler walked these same walls. Now at the end of the tunnel, there's a circular room that leads you into a golden elevator. Ooh. Even though the Eagle's Nest and the road leading up to it cost nearly 200 million euros to make, adjusted for inflation, Hitler only visited it on 14 documented occasions. This may be because Hitler was afraid of heights and he was also scared of using the elevator. Thankfully the Eagle's what? Nest wasn't destroyed in World War II and today it's a restaurant with panoramic views. Now while you're there you can hike up some walking paths into the Berchtesgaden National Park enjoying the incredible sights of this historical destination. Afterwards we're going to head back to Berchtesgaden to visit the Lake Kuninzi. Now the lake was created by like glaciers like which makes it feel like you're in a fjord you'd see in Norway or New Zealand. When I was there we took a boat ride to the end of the lake. It cost around 15 euros and took about 50 minutes to cross the lake. Now the first stop was to the famous St. Bartholomew's Church. We kept going and we reached the end of the lake. We then hiked about 10 minutes to reach Obersee, I mean just home to this iconic lake hut and the scenery there is just astounding, I mean the lake's so clear and it's just surrounded by massive mountain walls that are hard to explain. I mean I just had a great time enjoying the scenery around the lake, definitely gotta explore Kuningsi and Obersee while you're in Berchtesgaden. After we're going to visit the city of Dresden. Now located in eastern Germany near the Czech Republic border, Dresden is an incredibly beautiful city built upon the Elbe River. It's famous for its Baroque and Rococo architecture. Now leading up to the 20th century, Dresden was just a remarkably beautiful place. But tragically, during World War II, the city was almost completely destroyed by air raids. I mean the whole city was just turned into rubble. Now the restoration of the city took decades to complete. Now today, Dresden is one of Germany's most visited cities and has been nicknamed the Florence of the Elbe. Now a beautiful nature spot near Dresden is the Bastai Bridge. It's located in Saxon, Switzerland and it's this famous rock formation part of the Elbe Sandstone Mountains. It's been a tourist attraction for over 200 years. In 1824 a wooden bridge was made into the rock formation which was later replaced to the present bridge today. I mean such a cool spot. Now afterwards we're going to visit some of Germany's of rivers. Course. Now Germany is home to some of Europe's most important rivers and many scenic cities, towns and castles have been built upon the river shores. Now one of the most important is the Danube. It originates in the Black Forest and empties in the Black Sea on Romania's coast making it the second largest river in all of Europe. Now one of my favorite cities on the Danube is Passau. It's located right on the Austrian border and Passau is nicknamed the city of three rivers as it's built upon the confluence of the Danube, Inn and Ilz rivers. And it's just pretty cool how you can see the different colors of the rivers as they merge together. Yeah. Now during the renaissance period, Passau was one of Germany's best sword and bladed weapon manufacturers. I mean it must have been pretty cool to live in Passau back then. Now the longest river in Germany is the Rhine. It begins in Switzerland and empties in the North Sea as it crosses through important cities such as Cologne and Dusseldorf. Now the banks of the Rhine River are home to so many towns and castles. An interesting place is the Falls Grafenstein Castle, quite the name. Now it was built in the 4th- So guys, can you actually travel through the river in Germany? Like, since it's going like across the country, like, can you travel with river across the country? Please comment down in the comment section down below guys. 19th century and served as a toll station for passing ships. A chain was put across the river making sure ships would pay the toll and uncooperative sailors would be put in the castle's dungeon. I mean it's pretty fascinating if you ask me. Now another notable river in Germany is the Mossel. It's located in western Germany and the Mossel River is home to some of Germany's wow, best coloring. wine country as the river's hillsides are covered with terrace vineyards where some of the best Riesling grapes grow. One of the most notable places on the river is the Kohem Castle. The original castle was built back in the 1100s and it made its money by collecting shipping tools on passing ships down on the river. Sadly it was destroyed in 1689 by the French but in 1868 a wealthy businessman from Berlin decided to rebuild the castle ruins. Today it stands perched on a hill overlooking the beautiful town of Kohem and the Marcel River. Another fairy tale location like in Germany is the home Zala this castle actually look like something out of Game of Thrones. 
like you know those castles in the Blackstone and the rest. That's how this this castle does look right now. Like so, something straight from Game of Thrones. Something like it doesn't look real because it's also beautiful. Like the kind of reddish stone grass and trees around it. Like I just can't explain how how this how beautiful this thing is. Like oh, wow, actually breathtaking, guys. Castle. Now I have to say this is one of the most impressive castles in all of Germany. It sits perfectly on Mount Hohenzollern and can be so seen green. from miles away. Hohenzollern is the last of three castles that was built upon this hill. It was completed in 1867 as a memorial to the Prussian royal family. Today it's one of Germany's most visited castles and I understand why. Now after we're going to visit Lake Constance. Now it's this massive lake that's not only in Germany but also borders Austria and Switzerland. Now it's the second largest lake in all of Europe by volume. Now one scenic place on the lake is this town called Lindau. Now what makes it so unique is that it's this island. Now it was first mentioned by a monk in the 9th century and during medieval times it became quite the fortified city. Today it's a popular place to visit. I just love the harbor and just the fact that it's an island. I mean just such a cool place. Another picturesque city on Lake Constance is Mearsburg. It's located right on the shores and it's a historical town like with beautiful colored houses. After we're going to visit the capital city of Berlin. Now today Berlin is a thriving capital with a population of over 3.6 million people. It's an incredible city with a complicated history. Now Berlin was first documented in the 13th century. During World War II, it was the headquarters of Hitler's Third Reich and became the most heavily bombed city in history. After the war, what? Berlin was divided into the East and West Berlin. With the end of the Cold War, East and West Berlin were finally reunited in 1990. So one of my favorite spots is the Radenberg Gate. It's this 18th century neoclassical monument that is Germany's national symbol of unity and peace. You can also check out the Berlin Wall Memorial to see remnants of the historical wall. After Berlin, we're going to head over to Hamburg. Located in northern Germany on the Elbe River, Hamburg is the second largest city in Germany oh. after Berlin. Thanks to its access to the North Sea, Hamburg grew as the port city throughout the ages that it is Europe's third largest port I just love all the canals that run through the city Hamburg is home to two th well since I've noticed so far there's always water every part of Germany there's water like that's fascinating guys 1,500 bridges, making it the city with the highest number of bridges in Europe. It reminds me of modern-day Venice. A really impressive spot in the city is the Spikerstadt. It's the largest warehouse district in the world. Now, another beautiful spot in the city is the Alster Lakes. It's a set of two artificial lakes that are often full of sailboats during the summertime. While we're still in northern Germany, we're going to visit Lübeck. Now located just an hour's drive from Hamburg, Lübeck is the second largest city on Germany's Baltic coast. Lübeck is famous for being the de facto capital of the Hanseatic League, which was a medieval organization that dominated maritime trade between the 13th and 15th centuries. Even after the Hanseatic League fell apart in 1669, Lübeck remained an important trading town on the Baltic Sea. Today, Lübeck is one of northern Germany's most beautiful cities and it's nicknamed the City of Seven Towers thanks to its prominent church towers that dot the city. My favorite feature of Lübeck is the Holstein Gate. It was built in 1464 and served as the city's gate. Today, it's a museum and stands as a symbol for the city. I mean, I just love its two Gothic towers and they kind of have a lean on them. I mean, such an incredible structure. Now, from Lübeck, you can venture up to the Baltic coast. A beautiful area is Broughton. It's home to coastal cliffs and incredible views of the Baltic Sea. There's a walking trail that follows the coast, and it's an ideal spot to explore on a summer day. You can also visit the shores of Schwarbutz. There's a massive beach and pier to walk out on. One of the most beautiful palaces in northern Germany is the Schwerin Castle. It's located about an hour from Hamburg and the castle is built upon an island in Lake Schwerin. There's been castles on the island since the 10th century, but the majority of the castle you see today was built in the 19th century. The castle is regarded as one of Europe's best examples of romantic architecture and is being nicknamed the Neuschwanstein of the North. Afterwards, we're going to visit Cologne. Now located on the Rhine River in western Germany, this 2,000 year old city is full of history Hold and on. beauty. Is the whole of Germany a tourist spot? Because so far, it seems like it has been calling everywhere and everywhere is just like beautiful. Like I can't name drop the spots it has caught so far because they've mentioned a lot of cities, a lot of waters, a lot of towns like bro. So what you're trying to tell them right now, the whole of Germany is a tourist spot. 
Okay, I'm booking my visa idea. It was established in the first century AD thanks to its location as one of Europe's major trade routes. It grew to be one of the largest cities north of the Alps during medieval and renaissance times. Sadly, during World War II, Cologne was one of the most heavily bombed cities. Thankfully, the city has been rebuilt today. The most popular attraction of the city is the Cologne Cathedral. Its construction began in 1248 AD and it wasn't completed for nearly 600 years until 1880. I mean, the wait was worth it. I just can't believe the details of this Gothic cathedral. After Cologne, we're going to head over to Frankfurt. Located in West Central Germany, Frankfurt is one of Europe's major financial hubs and it's home to the European Central Bank. It's full of beautiful skyscrapers and kind of reminds me of American cities. Aside from its skyscrapers and financial districts, Frankfurt is a beautiful historical town. One of the most popular places is Romerberg. It's a beautiful town square lined with colorful timber houses that will get your German vibes going. Afterwards, we're going to visit Heidelberg. Now, located about an hour's drive from Frankfurt, Heidelberg is a historic city situated on the Neckar River. Heidelberg is probably best known for its university that was founded over 600 years ago, making it Germany's it's oldest really university. Cool. I mean, wow. it would be so cool to study there. Now, what I love about the city is its bridges that cross the Neckar River, I and mean, Germany knows how to design a beautiful city. Now, while we're still in southwestern Germany, we're going to visit the Black Forest. Now located right on the border of France, the region is famous for its dense forest, picturesque villages, and is often associated with the Brothers Grimm's fairy tales. Now one of the most prominent cities in the Black Forest is Freiburg. It's a vibrant university town with some incredible architecture. I mean, I'd love to just road trip to the Black Forest this summer. Now afterwards, we're going to visit the magical village of Rottenburg. Now when you go to Rottenburg, you'll feel like you're walking in a fantasy movie. It's one of the most preserved medieval old I towns in like all of Europe. Bro. During the Middle what Ages, Rottenburg thrived as it was located at the crossroads of European trade routes. At the beginning of the 15th century, it rose to becoming the second largest city in all of Germany. But during the 17th century, Rottenburg faced adversities such as the Thirty Year War and the Bubonic Plague. Without much resources, Rottenburg's growth was halted, which aided in keeping the town preserved in its medieval state. Today, Rottenburg maintains its medieval charm, and it's been the inspiration for sets of Disney movies such as Pinocchio. If you go, you can check out the famous Plonian Corner or witness the beautiful Christmas markets. I mean, it's just hard to beat the allure of this German village. From Rottenburg, like if this should inspire a movie, like no one that most movie look like this, because hearing him say. This place inspired a Disney movie, like, because watching the whole city look like a movie. So, what, what I'm trying to say, like, most movies actually just take the landscape and copy it and just, like, bring a character into the whole place and just make a movie, because what's this? Like, this this is a fairy tale, right? Like, this is a fairy tale. The whole Germany is a fairy tale, guys. This is Tinkerbell. Germany is a Tinkerbell land. The magic land, like that's how we see. You can make the three hour drive to the beautiful city of Munich, also known as Bavaria's capital. Munich is located in the south of Germany, about 50 kilometers from the Alps. During World War II, Munich was heavily bombed by over 70 air raids, but today the city is restored to its former beauty. One of the most popular spots is the Marienplatz Central Square. You'll find the new town hall with its stunning clock tower and historical figurines. Now for our final destination, we're going to visit the iconic Neuschwanstein Castle. I have to say that it is the most beautiful castle in all Europe. It's what inspired Disney's Sleeping Beauty Castle. I mean, it's just the perfect place for a princess. Whoa, now, the castle is nestled at the very bumps. tip of southern Germany. My Shansen Castle bumps. is placed perfectly in the mountains with a phenomenal 360 like, view of the... The beauty of this castle gave me goosebumps and topping the fat, it, it, like, inspired Disney's um, Cinderella. Hell, like, what you said, like, what you said, yeah, that's, that's what I remember the casting called, but, like, the beauty of it just gave me goosebumps. Like, like, it just gave me that chill. Like, the way it's standing in the forest, all majestic, like, what? I think the best architects are, are from Germany. <laughs> that's how we say, because the whole city plan, the whole building style, it just can't be real. That means not a real place. It just can't be real, guys. It's too good to be true. Very Alps in the town below. The construction of the castle began in 1869. During World War II, the SS debated blowing up the castle to prevent it from falling into the enemy's hands, but thankfully it never happened. What? Today, the castle receives over 1.4 million visitors a year, so it's definitely a tourist hotspot. When I was there, we walked around the castle. When you're up close, you realize how huge it really is. 
King Ludwig had some imagination. Anyways, I found a great vantage point in the trees with a perfect view of the castle. I mean, I just can't get over the beauty of this place. I mean, it's truly something out of a Disney fairy tale. Now, another incredible spot nearby is St. Coleman's Church. It's located just a few minutes away and has a splendid view of the castle and the Bavarian Alps. One of my favorite memories of my time in Germany was enjoying the sunset at the church, just marveling at the green pastures and overall scenery. Like Germany truly is a magical place. Well, that is it for my Germany top 25. I'm just barely scratching the surface. I mean, there's so many more incredible places in this country. Let me know where your favorite place is in Germany in the comments below. I also started a Spanish channel and I did a film on Germany if you'd rather watch it in Espanol. Now you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan and we will see you later. Hey guys, we've come to the end of this video. I brought us said it's barely scratching the surface of Germany. Like, why didn't anybody tell me about jam before? Like, why is it the first time I'm seeing jam to be this beautiful? Like, I've been out of jam, jam. The only thing that comes to my mind is good cars because I heard that they have a lot of like well money. German cars, they are injured to die for, like, bro. Like, the, the angel was so good. But nobody talk about the architecture. Like, come to see this video now. Like, now I do believe love at first sight because from the first scene I saw, I was like, what? Is this place real? Like, bro, this is so beautiful, like, modern, modern nature, like, it's so beautiful. This is like combined of modern nature with architecture. Like, it's giving you, giving you those ancient vibes mixed with modern vibes in it. Like, I might even make sense, but like, I was just like, I was, I was in awe. Oh. And again, I should load this out, and I feel this video should be titled, Germany is a tourist center. Because this is not like, 25, top 25 place. Like, everywhere is just so beautiful, like, there's no stress in like, you don't need to look for like you're already there just like everywhere you turn the camera like you have to be like what bro like every angle has its own beauty like the the, the weather was beautiful the ground itself was beautiful the green grass like the buildings like <sighs> that's three for another day and i like the part when you said that it does scratch the surface of jamming like there's still more to be talked about there's still more to show the world like Come on guys, and nobody's saying this about this, like, that's crazy. Like, nobody's posting Jamie like this. Nobody's saying like, okay, I travel to Jamie. Like, I've seen a lot of people like, Jamie, go for vacation, this is a country. I've seen all those, all those videos, but like, nobody's like, posting like, okay, Jamie, I went to Jamie and this, like, if not for this video, I wouldn't know that Jamie was this amazing, guys. Like, so I'm really happy watching this video and I would like to book a visa to Jamie someday. I hope I've set my visa, but like, well, with what I saw here, yeah, Germany is a like good country. You can see the space and you can tell you can breathe fresh air in Germany because there are less pollution. Like, come on, there's more plants than like pollution. Like, you barely see liners or all these like industrial smokes, all that stuff. I saw what I only saw mostly was a lot of green area, greener pasture. Actually, Germany is a greener pasture. I was saying so. Germany is a greener pasture. And what like what interests me the most was the way they recovered from World War II. Like. That, was, that is fast, like, bro. Like, they show the most bomb city on earth. And what it's looking like now, like, how do you guys build that so fast? Like, it looked like it was never destroyed. Like, it was always like that. Like, God created it like that. <laughs> but come on, this is man made. Like, what? Germans are incredible people, too. So I will point that out because the country just can't be this beautiful. The people themselves in the country, they're incredible people and they have good mind. Because if you are like a weaker person, the country can't be like this. So I have to give. German will good accolade for that for keeping their country so good and clean guys i thank you guys for watching this content with me to this time i really appreciate you guys please if you're new here please give this video a big thumbs up hit the bell icon to come into fire and it i'll be posting new video guys and please stay tuned on this channel because i'll be posting a lot of content like this a lot of charming content music tourist content and whatsoever bro i'll be posting on this channel so please subscribe and stay tuned on this channel have a blessed day and i hope to see you guys at my next video guys bye bye